Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now we all know that the Inghams, Sarah and Chris, are fairly narcissistic, right? It's fairly well known, but today we're going to find out just how much and why. And specifically, we are going to reach out to the inner souls of the kids who are at the centre of this. So Isabel, specifically Esme Isla and the others, please take on board everything in this video because it, I'm sure, I'm certain it relates to you. Now the following clips are from a channel called Psych2Go. I'll link it in the description box below because it's a very intuitive channel which basically says how things are psychologically and this these ones relate specifically to narcissistic parents or family. So this these, I believe, relate to Chris and Sarah to a T. It's been drilled into our heads repeatedly, whether it be by friends, movies, or other media. Family is the most precious treasure, but what if there's someone who is outright toxic? How do you know? Perhaps you were surprised to learn that things that happened in your home were not what everyone else experienced. We understand that seeing and accepting someone as toxic can be difficult when it comes to family. So let's look at some signs that can reveal the toxicity. Number one, they constantly overstep your boundaries and privacy. Have you told a family member about your boundaries? That there are some things that you are just not okay with, no matter how they spin it? Is was, what's that man? Isabel's just got back from her sleep. What's up gorgeous girl? You all right baby girl? Yeah. All sorted for bed now. Mm -hmm. Feel good to be back in your bed. Yeah. Yeah. Boom! Hey gorgeous, what are you doing slothing in your bed? <laughs> Did I scare you, babe? A little bit. Did I actually get you? Yeah. Yeah, I was like waiting so long under your bed, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. Now, Isabel, you may not realise it just yet, but listen to the words of this video and come to the realization that filming entering your safe space which is your bedroom with a camera whilst you're lying in bed or hiding under your bed and filming it is not okay it's not a normal thing to do it could be anything from teasing you about your weight. I've had a few messages saying how things like, how do you look that good after giving birth? And you've had five children and how have you lost the weight so quickly? Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, basically just, your body's amazing. Yeah. And your body is what it's meant to be. And don't let anybody say it. it Isabel, in fact, had a few comments negatively about her body recently. Oh, yeah. And, and it has, and it did affect her. Um, but that's not for this video. Um, but we've had chats about it. People online can be cool. Nobody, yep. Nobody's blooming business. What our bodies are like. Yep. We're proud of it, aren't we? Yes. And Isabel's definitely working on her self-esteem. Now, Isabel, you may not have realised it at the time, or you may still not realise it now, but that particular clip showed that Sarah firstly praised herself for being so, looking so good, and then turned to you and said, you don't look good in the same sort of sentence. So that was passive aggressively saying, my daughter is not good. And the amount of times, think about the amount of times Sarah has done things like that. It's not normal. To making you live their dreams for them. So not only is the caravan pitched a lair, the actual caravan, although they've got double glazing on the windows, we didn't have double glazing. So and we also had a veranda. Yeah. But the veranda will be, what, 25 years old? It's probably rotted. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably. probably why they got rid of the veranda. But it's definitely... <laughs> yeah, these guys are playing Connect 4, mini travel version. All these recent trips on the, in the caravan may come across as a wholesome family trip that she wants to do with her kids but at the end of the day she's trying to relive all the times that she went on holiday with her family or try to improve upon what she did as a 
when she was younger, she didn't get away, get to go away with her mum. So she's trying to make it so that you are living those dreams for her. I may even try to say things like, this is good for you, or that you should learn to accept what they're doing, despite evidence to the contrary. This is toxic behavior. It's disrespectful to you as an individual, and no matter how they spin it, this is not healthy, and you aren't obligated to take it. Number two, they always demand something from you. My way or the highway is the prevailing attitude with this toxic family member. Yeah, and also, Chris really wants to buy a van. And let me just put out there, guys, it's not that I don't want to buy a van. Well, it is that I don't want to buy a van, to be fair. I don't want to spend the money and buy a van when I've got a caravan outside. I'm that type of person. I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to spend the money on a van. They're not cheap, you know? Isabel, in particular, or Esme, or Isla, just think about the amount of times that Chris has planted the seed in your head that he wants a van he wants a caravan he wants to go away he wants to go to the arctic he wants to go here and he wants to go there and he 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 and that is because he is putting it into your head that that is the only way it's his way or no way there's no bend or compromise unless it's you doing the bending. No matter how much you do, it's never enough. There's always something more. The asks are so frequent that eventually you start to lose the ability to step back and gauge the situation. They keep demanding and nitpicking far beyond what is reasonable or considerate. And eventually you give in. Even Sarah in the example of the caravan holidays, she eventually gave in. It was not what she wanted to do originally. And it won't have been what you wanted to do as a child to go away and lose all your friends. But eventually it wears you down and you eventually give in to the situation and just accept that that's what you have to do. And should you bring up your own needs, you're likely to be shamed or guilted for daring to think of yourself and your own well-being. We'll tell you something here. You're not selfish for wanting to live your own life, and you're not a bad person for assessing the situation. That kind of constantly demanding dynamic is unhealthy and not the norm. So have you ever wanted to just break free? Have you ever felt like that you wanted something more to not have to go away and lose your friends and just sit down and study without a screaming child right there next to you? You have the right to do that. And if you have been feeling that way at any point, you are not abnormal. This is a normal person reaction. Number three, they don't recognize your achievements. Hey, you got that certificate. Sweet, you got second in an international competition. You got the job you wanted. You're proud of yourself because this wasn't just a participate and watch thing. You didn't cheat. You're not asking for a prize for eating a healthy salad. It's something significant. But did all those achievements just get shoved in a back closet, never to be mentioned again? And view all the work that Isla's been working on since September. I think it's so important for schools to do this because it's just incredible to see where they come from September to where they are now with the handwriting, their maths, their spellings, everything. It's, it's so lovely to see, not only for parents, but for the child as well. Isla is so excited whenever we do these or whenever the school do these um, show and tell, stay and play type things because she gets to show all her work and I really do think it encourages children to work really hard in school so that when these do come around they've got good work to show their parents. Remember all the times that you did something really good, school related possibly Isla, I'm thinking about mainly here, where she's come home excited from school, she's done this and she's done something amazing and she's so excited about it and now that's never ever get, get mentioned at, at all and in that example it's all just shoved into the imaginary cupboard there and never to be talked about again. But really, it's just a way of keeping your self-confidence low, allowing them to continue feeling superior and in control. So never forget that. 
that's a very important point most of what sarah does is to keep you in line to keep that level of control and so that you, she feels above and superior to you and never allows you to move on number four all of your problems are ignored called attention seeking or sad excuses the scene you approach a family member about how you're overworked showing signs of burnout and need a break or you find that the grief you're experiencing from a loss is extra difficult so you need to postpone doing that favor for the family member did you just get nervous fearful or maybe feel hopeless did your mind immediately start resisting saying no i can't do that why maybe you know they'll just shrug it off with a yeah yeah what else is new does that relate to you isabel i mean maybe not now that it it's stuck in your mind that everything is perfect now but just think back over the years have you ever thought to yourself i really don't want to do this i really don't want to go away have you ever tried to approach the subject but thought exactly that and kind of clammed up and just not said anything because you're afraid of what they might say to you has that ever ever happened or roll their eyes and pretend not to hear you perhaps you're anticipating being scolded for being a spoiled bratty attention seeker or a lazy good for nothing it might be followed up with a bitter chaser of i went through this and didn't need a break just to make you feel that much more inadequate disregarding your feelings and your individual right to your emotional response is toxic and not right attention love and reassurance during downtimes is a basic need not a flighty request their inability or unwillingness says a lot about them and not a bad reflection on you and that is the perfect example of what you should expect as a, a human being and your parents should treat you with that respect and give you love care and attention irrespective of what else is going on in their lives you deserve that love and you shouldn't have to try to demand it or try to get their attention number five you are at fault for everything is everything you say or do taken negatively are even your most compassionate actions twisted into something ugly have you found yourself being blamed for impossible things oh uh, yeah that's bad poison and no you shouldn't be treated this way nor is it a normal part of family life catch this sign by taking a small step back trust your mind and ask yourself things like could this truly possibly be directly my fault is what i did really that awful you aren't obligated to be a dumping ground scapegoat for their issues so yeah 90 percent on that test is a great score and no you're not at fault that a family member forgot their own lunch the constant blaming and criticizing can have you build up resentment and anger if you feel trapped being expected to accept this know that this toxic behavior is not something expected to be a part of life and you have every right to let it and them go so you have the right to not be treated like that have you ever been in a situation where your mum has just put everything on you this slyly said it's your fault if you didn't do that then this wouldn't have happened or something along those lines you don't always recognize that it it is happening at the time it's happening but if you look back at so many occasions we see them on the vlogs but things that happen does it feel like that that is something which may be happening to you number six gaslighting this term has been around long enough now that any search with just this word will bring up a whole lot of hits how do you catch it happening take note if you sense they lie to you a lot one or two times of no you owe me a coffee remember can really just be a mistake but if everything you know is make-believe according to them and memories concerning them seem to be almost completely revised good chance they're gaslighting you 
They're trying to ensure you don't trust yourself. The low confidence ensuring you'll never do better than them and they'll never have to take accountability for their own shortcomings. Needless to say, not normal, not healthy and very abusive. Search deep inside yourself, Isabel. Does Sarah or Chris do this to you? Do they make it seem like everything is you and make you not trust your own feelings? Are they trying to push you down and make sure that you never rise and you don't have the confidence to leave? And not only that, but can you see that in how they behave towards your siblings? What is the relationship between you and your mother like? Perhaps you've noticed that something is just not right in your relationship, but you have no idea why. And because of that, you've questioned yourself and wondered whether it was something you were doing. Or is it something she's doing? Sound familiar? Children of narcissistic parents go through their lives feeling confused and lost and in search of the love they never received from home. They expect their mothers to nurture and support them. But when they're dealing with narcissistic mothers, they aren't given the love and support that healthy parents should provide. Narcissism is one of the buzzwords used a lot in mental health literature and social media. So how do we know our own mothers are narcissistic or simply just being mother? She sees her children as her trophies or her pawns. Ever feel like your achievements are used by your mother to show off her status and her ability? A narcissistic mother sees her child as an extension of herself. The sad truth is the only thing narcissistic mothers care about is how others see them through their children. So when her child makes any mistake in public, she belittles them. A narcissistic mother will be full of praise when you make her look good. Esme had a dance thing yesterday. Three hours she did, or just over, and she got star of the week. She got a little trophy. So, in fact, Jace, she's, this is a, exactly what she said. She said, in fact, Jace is probably the most advanced talking two and a half year old I've ever known on any of my visits. And I've been doing this for a lot of years. So, Isabel, Esme, Ayla, have you ever known your mother? Not just these examples, but to say how amazing you are and how you were the best of the best, even though you know in yourself that that wasn't the case. There's nothing wrong with feeling proud of how you have done personally, and that's normal and very healthy. But when your mother is showing off to everybody else how well you are doing, and saying how you are the best to everybody else when you know it's not even true, then it's more, more than likely she's doing that to praise herself on how good she is as a parent. Hypercritical and judgmental when you make her look bad. And the worst part, she knows where it hurts and will often not consider this before making comments at your expense. If you have siblings, She'll pit you against each other to gain more control. The golden child is the one she favors more, solely because of how good you make her look around others. Now, do you notice ever how certain siblings get treated differently to other siblings? Jace is one who tends to get away with a lot, whereas Mila may not. Isla certainly gets the brunt of a lot of things so that is not normal behavior it is very toxic if she sees you as the scapegoat she'll put the blame on you for everything and even emotionally reject you because you make her look bad and we see it a lot of times with Isla being made to be the scapegoat for everything and get the nasty remarks from her mum all the time number two she likes to keep control does she get angry when you disagree or don't do what she wants you to do does she try to make you feel guilty for having separate interests hobbies desires and opinions now isabel may not notice this actually happens because i don't think it applies a lot to her but when sarah is talking with isla in particular she cuts her off a lot 
She rolls her eyes at Ayanga a lot. She disregards Ayanga's point of view a lot. And that is because she's not interested. She's only interested in herself and not what her daughter has to say to her. Mothers who exhibit narcissistic traits like to have complete control over all aspects of their children's lives, from friends to music to clothes and habits. And Sarah exhibits all those traits. She won't allow her children out to have friends. She buys her kids clothes. Um, she won't allow them to grow and become their own human beings and have their own interests and do what they want to do and and everything else. She uses manipulation to get what she wants. Does trying to assert yourself result towards your mother in anger, rejection and hostility? Manipulation is her game and she will often play it well. She will use guilt trips through emotional blackmail to make you and any siblings you may have dance to her music. She doesn't appreciate your attempts to individuate as it means you're going to be less available to serve her needs. Have you ever agreed with what Sarah wants to do? Have you ever thought that you had your own opinion about what she wants to do and you agree with going on all these trips, you agree with certain aspects of your life, but chances are it's what Sarah wanted you to do in the first place and she has somehow manipulated you into believing that that is what you want to do so when you or when we hear you say yes I want to do this it's more than likely because Sarah has manipul manipulated you in the first place into believing that you want to do it her love is conditional rather than unconditional as mentioned earlier, the mother who is narcissistic is interested in how you and your achievements reflect on her. However, on the flip side, she may even become jealous. As a result, she may use love as a way to reward and to punish. Narcissistic mothers know that the most powerful weapon over their children is their love, which is one of the reasons why children of narcissistic mothers will often be perfectionistic in a misguided attempt to win their mother's love. Do you find yourself fighting for Sarah's love and attention? Do you find yourself fighting over camera time in particular because you know that the only time Sarah gives you attention, which you equate to love, is when you are on camera because when you're not on camera, she doesn't give you that love and attention at all. She often diverts the conversation to focus on herself. Have you ever found yourself trying to communicate an issue or a problem to your mother and feel like she's just not listening? Do you feel unvalued in your family dynamic? Narcissistic mothers will take control and change the direction of the conversation to focus on themselves. We see this a lot in the vlogs. Sarah turns the attention on herself. Whenever one of her child, one of her children are talking to her, she ends up turning it around and talking about herself and ignoring what her child wanted to say in the first place. She lacks empathy. Because they're so super focused on themselves, narcissistic mothers are unable to sympathize with their children. It's likely that she'll not validate your feelings as there's very little room in her emotional consciousness for her to do so. Narcissists are self-centered and they feel the entire world should revolve around them. If they do something that upsets you, narcissists won't acknowledge their mistakes or soothe your upset because they believe they can do no wrong. Does she ever have what she calls banter with you? Does she say things and then just say it's banter and make you believe that it's just banter? Because believe you me, it's not banter. No mother should basically pick on their child and then call it banter. And then she laughs at every little misfortune that you suffer. You fall over, she laughs. You do bad at an exam, she laughs. Everything is a joke to her and she laughs at your misfortune all the time. That is not normal. That is abusive and toxic. She's unpredictable. 
never quite know where you stand with your mother? Narcissists often wax and wane in terms of their attention and availability. She may shower you with affection and attention when she wants something from you and ignore you when she's doing okay. This is also known as love bombing. And that's going back to what I said before about having to fight for her attention and love through the lens of a camera when you're on camera she loves you and gives you attention when you're not on camera she just ignores you and gives you no attention at all she will never want to let you go has your mother ever said something like you can't leave me or you need me all parents know their kids will grow up and eventually leave the nest However, narcissistic mothers may have a harder time letting go. Codependency in relationships is a trademark of people suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. So a narcissistic mother may hold on to her child as long as possible, even into adulthood. She will use every tactic in the book to make them feel dependent on her. Now we see something similar to this a lot with Sarah. She doesn't like her children to grow up. She wants to keep them as young as possible for as long as possible. Now, Isabel, Esme, Isla, that's not normal at all. That is not something which should be applauded. And when you get older, as you can see now, she is having difficulty letting you go and moving on with your life. Isabel, she's got it into your head that education was never important and now what are you going to do now that you don't have any education she just wants you to travel with her that is again is not normal it's not allowing you to grow and fly despite the social and media insistence that parents always love their child and you owe your mother everything because no one loves you like her parents can be toxic to their children it's not okay and no one should be expected to put up with the abuse. Although both parents can be toxic, mothers tend to use emotional manipulations so the child grows to believe the abuse is normal, deserved, or even required for them to grow up properly. So I feel like this was a very important video to bring to the attention of not just the Ingham children, but every child that belongs to a family like this. And just to know that it's not normal behavior some of what your parents do yes it's out of love but a lot of what we see on camera in particular that's not normal behavior at all and whilst different families have different expectations and different rules and different this and that one thing remains the same every child deserves love attention respect and dignity and if you're not getting any of that then there's something wrong thank you all so much for watching this please give it a massive thumbs up if you've appreciated what i've done and comment everything you want to comment down below about this until next time don't forget to subscribe if you're new we're heading towards 9,000 subs now. Thank you so much to everybody who's recently subbed. Until next time, have a lovely day. Take care and bye-bye.